This is Mike Hines from Allison Chains, and you are listening to Sound Vapors. Hey, it is Tommy Mars here for the Sound Vapors podcast. How are you? Today's episode features an interview with Mike Inez, bass player for Allison Chains. The interview took place in Anaheim, California at the NAM convention just a couple weeks ago. Uh, it turned out to be fantastic. I had a great time speaking with Mike, and we got into a lot of great stuff. I mean, we got into Alice in Chains stuff. We got into some Ozzy stuff, uh, his new pickups. We even got into one of my favorite things to talk about was uh, the Big Kiss show at Tiger Stadium in 1996, where Alice in Chains opened up. And Mike took a stage dive into the crowd, kind of close to where I was at. It's really awesome. So we got into all that kind of good stuff. So before we get started, I just want to say make sure you're subscribing. Turn on your notifications because this Sound Vapors YouTube channel, uh, it's here to stay. It's going to keep growing. So in the meantime, if you want to check out the other interviews that are not up on YouTube, uh, you can go to soundvapors.com. There you're going to find a path to the podcast or a link to all the other interviews and album reviews. So there's a ton of them on there. You're going to see a, a big catalog of interviews that we've done over the last you know year and a half. Uh, but I'll say, you know, already this year going into 2020, it's about a month old, and we've already had some really, really great interviews already this year. And it's such a young, you know, we're so quick into it, new into it, or whatever, how you want to say it. So the other good news is we have some really great interviews on the horizon. So stick around here the podcast or the website or whatever, you're going to see some really cool interviews. I have some guests lined up that are just going to knock your socks off. And I got a feeling if you're into, you know, this kind of music, when you go and search out, you know, the episode list, you're going to see probably a band or an artist that you like, or you're into or into their music. And it's just going to keep growing and the artists are going to keep uh, being here for you. So you can hear what they have to say about it. As always, if you want to, you know, talk to me, uh, recommend an artist or have a question for an artist. Even if it's somebody that we've kind of like spoken to in the past and you have a question, I will always try to reach out and get an answer for you. Uh, best way to do that. My handles on Twitter and Instagram. It's T O M M Y M A R Z B A N D. Tommy Mars band. That's my handle. And, uh, yeah, stick around, man. We got we got some cool stuff coming. I'm excited. All right, let's get to this interview. I want you to see this. Like I said, this was done on site just outside of Los Angeles. Mike Inez, Allison Chains, get it. Okay, so Tommy Mars here. Mike Inez, Allison Chains. Ooh, stuff all over the Thanks. Yeah, man. Hey, that's rock and roll too, right? <laughs> so we're here at NAM, and uh, first question is, man, you have new pickups. You got this new legacy signature. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Well, first of all, we've got the only pickup in this building you want to have for a bass. <laughs> That's right. I heard it. <laughs> that Sounds is, amazing. That is a bold statement. But, yeah, we've been working on this prototype here for a couple of years, and we finally got to the point where we're ready to um, basically uh, let our tone go out to the world now, you know? Yeah. And uh, my friend Ken Susi and the folks from Fishman, from Larry Fishman and Jason on down, uh, developed this just amazing technology. So we actually basically cloned my, my sound in this little tiny square right there, you know, it's just amazing. So, um, I can't say enough about how uh, excited, yeah. you know, our camp and the Fishman camp. And yeah. so, uh, yeah, but you were kind of you were chasing tone though, right? Like you kind of you had a, a little bit of a, a unique story, whereas you were kind of chasing something that it almost wasn't real, right? So you were you had a situation where you had something that was it was fake, or a fake EMG. Is yeah, it it's weird. Well, it, it's 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 a it's a point of contention now. So. Uh, for years, I was showing um, you know this pickup to, uh, to all these pickup manufacturers, not just EMG, but everybody. And everybody said, "No, it looks like an EMG." But then uh, the EMG guys didn't recognize any of the parts, you know. So it was kind of this mix and match. And so then we we started thinking like, "Oh, well, maybe we did it. Maybe we mixed up some of the old parts with some of the new parts." Yeah. And uh, so uh, it got to the point now. I just didn't want anybody to touch it, you know. Uh, uh, whenever something's wrong with that base, yeah, because you, know, you don't want to lose it. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to lose it yeah. for sure. Yeah. So. Uh, now, now we haven't lost it. We captured it now. So, um, yeah, I'm feeling a lot better. I, my biggest nightmare was to plug into this bass and not have uh, my tone, you know. So, yeah. especially on a record. So that's the thing. Oh, absolutely. So, so going then, uh, forward. It takes a lot, a lot of pressure off going forward. Now I yeah. can send these around to different countries, and I don't have to carry my one bass. And hopefully, an uh, airline doesn't, um, you know. Drive, drive over it with a forklift. Right, or, right, right, right. Or, uh, and that's huge for you, right? Because you guys yeah. are in so many countries. You have, how many bases are you traveling with? I mean, it's got, there's got to be 
when, when the adventure show, right? Usually I mean, I'll have 10 in a vault, and then I'll have one on the tour bus, and then I'll have one um, that's usually um, a, a kind of a, a thick, uh, one that travels, like it's either at my hotel mm -hmm. or backstage at a gig. Um, usually the gig bases, we just kind of like let the crew guys deal with, the, with those, you know. Okay. Because they're all uh, on different wireless frequencies and things like that. Okay. You know, so there's a lot to this. I'm just a dumb bass player. I just start making a bunch of noise yeah, and but you, jump well, around like a monkey when they tell me to. You're one of the <laughs> baddest that ever, ever, ever existed. That, you, you know, know why? Because I keep it simple. I yeah. don't ever think all this. <laughs> nice, nice. Well, how long has your relationship been with Fishman? Oh, it's been a couple of years now, yeah. right? Me and Kenny have been bros before that. You know. Oh, okay. And uh, oh, here I go again. Looks nice. like it. I, I don't even think that's going to be on the on the, the, okay. the thing there. All right, so um, can you run us through uh, your current rig setup right now? Like when you're uh, when you're playing live shows. So are you playing through? Are you still using like that that SVT? Yeah. Okay. Well, um, this last tour, I I, ha I had at the beginning of the tour, I was taking. I have a 69 amp pig, and I have two 1972s, and uh, so I was going through 810 cabinets and um, and 18s, and. Uh, a, just a sans amp. That's the only pedal I use. Sometimes oh. I'll use a chorus for, like, say, no excuses or, um, like, brother. Or so, sometimes when we bring it down, it, it's a nice creamy uh, chorus tone. But, um, yeah. And so, but with uh, the, we we went on tour with the band Corn all summer, and so I couldn't have all those cabinets on stage. We have these motorized lights that come out and are yeah. moving lights. So we had to take all the amps off stage. So I was using two SBT two Pros. Um, and I was, I was putting them through these two 210 uh, wedges out front, you know, yeah. and just to have a little bit. It, it didn't sound like my normal tone, but um, once again, like I, like I was saying in the clinic here, is I, I kind of can get, a, I could play bass to any kind of tone, you know, so it's mainly what the front of house guy is going to be comfortable with, what the monitor guys, and especially I don't want to throw off the singers, you know, sure. so... Um, yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I put myself into that position where I'm like the third on the pecking order for my bass tone in, in wow. my own ears. Yeah, so yeah. I don't know, consummate team player. I think that's a good you trait. Are the team for, player. It's a good, good trait for a bass player. Yeah. I just know what works for people, and sometimes they don't even know what works for them. And, and you gotta walk them through. Yeah. You know, someone like Ann Wilson knows exactly what she wants. You know, oh, yeah. um, someone like Ozzy doesn't know what he wants. He just wants it louder. You know, yeah. and, and that then, works too. They yeah. both it both work too. Yeah. And then some people don't like a lot of bass shaking on stage, and yeah. so um, uh, and they'll just say cool, whatever you give them in the inner. So they'll just say cool, but it's like uh, I so I really get in there and work with them. It's like you want more distortion, you want less distortion, you want some bottom end on this. And, yeah, because the wobble. You know, if you're singing, the wobble could affect you. You know. Yeah, the, the and everybody hears everything a little different too. Sure. So I try yeah. I try to just like make a lot of options available for these guys. Mm -hmm. You know, and I bought these heads off the Van Halen camp, all three of those. So they're old Van Halen oh. heads. You know. Those. Um, wow. I, I grew okay. up in the same town with Michael Anthony, and I, like I know his whole family and stuff. So oh, we, we, we're right. old, old bros with the Van Halen camp. Yeah, nice. And there's such a, a deep um, history with with Allison Chains and Van Halen too. You know, yeah, so. absolutely. That was one of the first shows I ever saw. Allison Chains actually with uh, Van Halen. Yeah, so and, that was, and Jerry uh, and uh, Jerry and Eddie get along great. You know, yeah. he's, he's one of our he's one of our older bros. You know? Yeah, I think <laughs> didn't he give him the fifty one fifty or something like mm -hmm. that? He get, yeah, it was, he gave him a uh, couple of uh, he, the gold top. Um, uh, Eddie guitar, and then there are probably like five or six others. You know, Eddie is great. Um, Jerry came home one day, and there was all these 5150 heads and cabinets in his garage. What? So Eddie just had them sent over. They opened Jerry's house and put them all in his garage. And nice. Jer Jerry came off tour. You know, back in the days that we weren't making as much money, and I was like, Jerry didn't know, you know, what he was going to do. Opened up, opened up this thing, and right. he didn't have to spend money on amps for Talk years after that. that. Yeah. yeah. So like, Eddie's been whoa. just such a supporter of Cantrell, you know. For sure. Yeah. So I mean, you've worked with like everybody knows, you know. Obviously, you know, Ozzy, Allison Chains, you know, uh, Wilson, uh, the Wilson sisters, and, and uh, right. you know, Hart and everything. William Shatner. You're on, you played right, yeah. Jackson, played, so. I, I did the captain's record, yeah. Yeah, it's the captain's record, uh, yeah. Me and, me and Zach Wilde, we did. Uh, we got yeah. a call from this engineer, a friend of ours, Adam, and he says, hey, come down, I got a wild session. So me and Zach uh, got to go jam with Captain Kirk. Dude, I mean, that's... It, was, it was unbelievable. Yeah, you know, so, the, the, I mean, question mark. Of all the things. Of all the know? things, right? <laughs> yeah. So there's, like, some of the people that, you know, people expect you to say, I want to work with this person, but who is somebody people don't expect you to want to work with that you'd love to work with in the future? God, I, I, I don't know. I just kind of like approach it um, kind of like what, what, whatever the week's going to bring, you know. Uh, okay. we got an office that kind of fields everything now. But mainly it's like um, 
like I don't have to do a lot of session work and I have to do a lot of things for you know for, for dough so now it's I, I have the luxury of just going to play on say recently it was Mark Morton from Lamb of God's solo yeah. record or um, or I'll do uh, uh, favors for for um, producer friends and you know sure yeah and I'm, I'm really just trying to keep this thing going I'm trying to keep um you know, everybody just making music. I think it's so important, you know. Yeah, yeah and you seem like you seem like so, this really organic thing. Well, let me get you here. I got yeah. Rapid Fire. We're going to get you out. So, oh, okay. Favorite yeah. song to play live? It, it can be Alice in Chains or Ozzy. Any. What's your favorite oh, song? Oh, I, I would say, well, um, we, we've been playing Alice in Chains for uh, a lot. I'd, I'd say the heavy Alice in Chains songs, like Damn That River, We Die Young, all that, the heavy, fast stuff. Yeah. That's my thing. Jerry likes the slow, sludgy stuff. Yeah. Sean likes anything weird. Like say Godsmack and stuff like yeah. that, and William uh, William likes to play the new stuff because he got to write the vocal lines sure, on some yeah. of the stuff. So, yeah. um, so we all have our favorites. You know, right. okay. I'm always pushing for the heavy though. What does that? Yeah, yeah, heck yeah. Heck yeah. Okay, so I mean, because like you did a little bit out there, but Rotten Apple for me, that's like uh, I did a list. It was on the site. Actually, I interviewed William a couple months ago, which was nice. Really, one of the best interviews I had all of 2019. Oh, yeah. So like, very insightful. This has got to hold up to the standard, man. Like he was like he was great. But Rotten Apple, I think. At that time, it's a mood thing, you know. I think that was my favorite. Yeah, what, it's this... it was my favorite beginning to any one of our records. You yes, know? And, absolutely. And we, we recorded that, like I think we wrote it, recorded it, and mixed it in like I think ten or eleven days or something like that. Insane. And then uh, we did it in between tours, and then we get a, a note from our management and the record company said, "Hey, your your album went to number one," yeah. and we were just like, "I had oh, one of those." Man. All right, so ba favorite bass player? If you just, I know there's a ton. I know there's a ton. Bruce, yeah, uh, I'm, Paul McCartney, so many great ones. No, my my favorite and always been my base. My favorite bassist is D. Murray from Elton John's band. Early oh, D. Murray. Yes, great. It's, so so many people I talk to, they don't even know who um, who D. Murray is. Yeah. You know, and uh, so Elton played on our record three records ago, yep. Black Is Way to Blue. Mm -hmm. So when we did the session and jam with Elton, uh, the whole time I was just grinding Elton on, okay, hey, what was D like? Yes. What yes. else was he using on that yes. song? Hey, how about this? How did he approach this? When yes. we did that radio show, 11, uh, 73 or whatever it was, yeah. 11, 16, I forget the name of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh, yeah. So, so yeah, Elton you're, was giving you're me, yeah. I'm like, oh, so, yeah. Uh, Elton's used to getting yeah. questions about Elton, you know, yeah, and yeah, I'm just yeah. grilling him about Dee Murray, you know. And, well, it's so funny because I said if I ever get Nigel, uh, you know, Rogers in the and now Rogers in the room, I'm going to ask him so many Bernard Edwards questions. He's going right, to get right. sick of it because to me, Bernard is like the guy. I mean, he had so much funk and rhythm. You oh know, yeah, so yeah, great. a lot of grease nuts. Oh heck yeah. Um, okay, three records you can't live without. Top of your head. Oh God, I. I uh, I should have prepped you with these. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it's okay. I mean, that's such a broad yes, term. How do, you, how do you start there? But like uh, recently, um, I've been getting into like Fishbone, Give a Monkey a Brain. I love that album. It's so yeah. diverse. Yes. Yeah. And uh, uh, Faith No More, King for a Day, I've been listening to King a lot. King for a Day. It's so underrated. Yeah. Nobody Everything. ever mentioned. Yeah, that's King the one. Day. Yeah, oh, for me, it's gosh. the best one. Star AD um, on that. that. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Or just a, the the song King for a Day too. It just yeah. takes you on a ride. And uh, what else have I been listening to? Since I came off the heavy rock tour, I've been listening to a lot of like Gillian Welch. Mm -hmm. uh, I was just talking uh, uh, about this with one, a movie director friend of mine, right? So we, we we got into a Stephen Stills, Gillian Welch, you know, um, that kind yeah. of that kind of like a, a roots Americana rock, you yes. know, kind of folky stuff, you know. But yeah, but I. I'd say so. You got to have a little bit of everything. I'd be the shittiest A and R guy because every album I really like, <laughs> it never sells. Right. So, Fishbone, Give a Monkey a Brain, you know, being yeah. a prime example of that. I mean, yeah. I thought that was one of the best records ever made. Yes. And yeah. they should Great. be way bigger. They're they're better than all of us, to be honest. We but did all of Palooza with them, and they just mopped the floor. It was us, Tool, Rage Against the Machine, um, Primus. And me and Les Claypool every day would say Fishbone is the baddest band on this right. stage. Yeah, when they were you watch wiping them as the a floor musician. with us. Yeah, yeah you're like, what? amazing. Man. What are you doing? Yeah. yeah, Norwood's here somewhere. I see him. Oh, the, yeah, oh, yeah, cool, I think cool. Norwood's around. Okay, so this is tough. This is tough. Mm. Zeppelin or Sabbath? It's almost. It's almost. Sabbath. Like, you gotta say Sabbath. Ah, yeah, you can't, you can't say it's one or the other. Uh, favorite sports team? <laughs> oh, uh. Uh, Oakland Raiders for sure. Oakland yeah, Raiders. Oakland okay. Raiders. I think pick a hockey team for some reason. No, uh, LA Kings fan. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, you, you played. But uh, 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 Oakland Raiders my team since I was a childhood. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Um, I was at the Tiger Stadium. Uh, oh, the Tom Brady rule, man. Okay, yeah. <laughs> He's still playing? I thought he retired. Oh, <laughs> nice. Um, okay, Tiger Stadium, 1996. Mm. I was a kid. I was there. I know, I, was Tiger, uh, uh, I was just talking to somebody. They tore down the old Tiger Stadium now. It's gone. 
There's yeah. a little field left. They used to have a little riser there. Oh, and they it, took it we down. We go down there. It was the coolest thing. Wow. So I was there. You jumped in the crowd. I don't know if you remember that. Right? You I jumped do. in the crowd. Yeah. You threw your base down, and I was close. Lane says, everybody's dressed up like Gene and Paul. Yeah. Nobody's dressed up like me. And so the whole crowd <laughs> point to me because I got the do rag, I got the wood shirt on, you know, all this stuff. So, um, question for you though is, where did you watch the show? From? The Kiss show? Yeah. We were kind of all over. It was a. Uh, it was so surreal for us because we were backstage. We had played, and then we came off stage, and me and Jerry and Sean went to eat, and then we we, were, we we ate, and then we were coming out of the catering, and then Kiss came out dressed as Kiss, and we know them. They're great, great folks, and great friends. So they uh, they, uh, they they walk down the hallway, and Gene's dressed like you know Gene, and he's playing his his bass, and he he says, Mike, how's uh, how was catering today? And I was like, oh, well, it was uh, chicken parmesan. It was really good. And the salad was cool. And I was just telling them that. Yeah. I'm like, wait a minute. I can't talk to you like this about chicken. I know, you're, right? You're, you're, you're the, he's you're, the demon right yeah, now. Yeah, you're, yeah. The, you're the god of thunder. Right. And I can't talk to you about chicken, Gene. So go play the show and we'll talk about it later. Right. We'll talk about cake. You know, yes. he loves his cake. Nice. So. <laughs> Actually, that, that show, when he went to the top, was the, probably one of the most epic moments oh, yeah. of that whole show. When he, oh, yeah. And, and to yeah. be like, to be honest, when, when we were playing that Tiger Stadium show, I'm, I was up there jamming thinking, wow, because right where the bass was playing, um, like that's where Ty Cobb stood, you know. It's like right where, where stage right was. Yeah, that's where Ty Cobb stood and played all those fucking games. So I'm sitting there up on. I was about you know 30 feet higher than Ty was when he was yeah. playing it. But I'm looking out at Tiger Stadium, which isn't. Yeah, it was so. That was one of the gigs that I'll always remember. Yeah. Especially uh, with Lane, that was one of the last yeah. like firing Lane Staley shows. I mean, it, was, it was great. It was prime. Yeah. It was big. And I always say, I always keep lists with everything. The website's always top 10 lists. Uh, it'll never be replaced for me because it was my current favorite band, Elsa Chains, current band growing up, Kiss. You know, and it, you guys played And the they show. haven't put their makeup on forever. It was the yes, first time they first time. Uh, with it Peter was, and Ace back. Peter and Ace, it was just the most... Well, I, I, I remember, remember thinking about it. When <laughs> playing that show, I looked over to my left on Jerry's side and I saw like Sebastian Bach yeah. Uh, with his arm around Billy Corgan, it was yeah. like you, like two different, completely s two different scenes. And I'm up there jamming. I look over. I'm like, whoa, that's weird. You know what's yeah. so crazy? That okay, so Sebastian Bach was actually right down the row from me, and then Billy Corgan comes walking by in front of him. He just was cool. Everybody was rubbing his head, you know. But he didn't didn't get upset. It was like that was the atmosphere. Everybody just loved it. Yeah, know? we have the same manager with uh, um, Billy now. Oh, know? so we, we see him around a lot. He's just a good dude, you know. So yeah. we we just like I am that guy. Ken knows this. We, I. I, if, I don't care if it's a brutal heavy metal uh, satanic band or uh, a country upstart, you know, uh, as, as long as people are, that's what I love about the NAMM shows here. Everybody's here just to make a bunch of noise and take what they bring to this place, take it home and try these new guitar pickups and new basses and new yes. amps. And I, I just think it's really important to keep this thing going you know yeah. especially since nobody's making any money on fucking records anymore you know no. it's kind of like it's no. up it's really up to us to keep this thing going so yeah, i'm a great big having, fan of that yeah you know? having artists like you demoing everything showing everybody is great um last question for you true or false allison chains will do another sap jar of flies type record uh there's a, there's always to talk about it right now we, we're less than 100 days out from our last concert so we did 32 countries uh, like 100 and almost 140 gigs so we're we're just uh going to take a break for a while Sounds good. yeah Sounds good. so uh you know i'm excited i'm going to build a, a recording studio at my house that's what i got going starting on monday we're building walls monday oh and, yeah awesome. so and then cool. uh, um yeah me and ken are threatening about going out on some clinic tours maybe with this thing or, nice you know, we'll figure it out yeah, well i we tell go. you what i built a yeah. studio in my house and i did these uh this whole green glue thing in the wall it's off of it's a floating oh, wall right, right, so right. the ceiling the wall everything is floating uh i never want to do it again if yeah. I ever move and build a studio, I will never do it again. Oh, it's great because you right. cannot hear. If I have a drummer in there, you're upstairs, can't hear anything. It's yeah. the greatest thing. It was the biggest pain in the ass of my life oh, because you right. got these, you got the, the studs, right? Yeah. But then you have. But you got to do the, the soundproof glue. Yes. Yeah, everything. You've got these clips, these wrist clips that right. come off there. And then these hat channels go to that and it's all metal. And then it's, you know. Five wow. eighths drywall, green glue drywall again, and then you've got all that up there, and it's the greatest thing ever. It is soundproof. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It's not even soundproof. It's soundproof. Get people to do it. <laughs> yeah, I did it with my buddies, and it was awful. Yeah, one of my um, one of my uh, best friends is a contractor guy, so he's gonna do it. And I was like, Yeah, he, he, every time I pick up a nail gun or a saw, he he he's like, You're gonna cut your hand off. Yeah, do please not. Don't. Yeah, that's what he says. Yeah. Please don't do that. Like, I'll play I'll play gigs with my feet if I have to. I don't yeah. care. I love this stuff. 
All right, so that was my interview with Mike Inez from Alice in Chains. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I did. I will see you back here next time. Make sure to subscribe, share, do all that good stuff. This is Tommy Mars signing out for Sound Vapors. See you again.